In my field of research, hunger is actually defined as the drive to consume in response to a biological need. So it's our body telling us that we need food to replenish our energy stores or the, to sustain our bodily functions. And our research at the University of Leeds shows that our overall hunger stems from a drive to eat and that's determined by a resting metabolic rate, which is the energy that our body expends to sustain our everyday bodily functions and to a lesser extent by our physical activity levels. But there's also a episodic mechanism, so on a meal-to-meal -meal basis, Signals such as an empty stomach, low blood glucose, and appetite-related hormones can also trigger or signal hunger. So all these signals work together to tell our appetite center in the brain that we feel hungry. So it's a very complex system. And what about if you feel hungry and then you don't eat and it, it, it goes away, even though you haven't responded to that feeling of hunger? So hunger feelings can go away after a while. So during prolonged fasting or in kind of food deprivation situations, our body produces ketone bodies and these have been proposed to suppress appetite. But this is really, really early days in that area of research. Hunger is not only influenced by internal factors, but also external factors. And we can forget that we're hungry under some circumstances because we're distracted or that we're, we're busy. Some people love to eat and, and they're very uh, in tune with their hunger sensation. So it, it's definitely not a, a one size fits all um, kind of comment. So we have several appetite systems in the brain and one of them is the hedonic system. Even though we're not hungry, we can still want to eat because we have that pleasure system in the brain which can override these sensations of, of fullness, for example. So let's say, for example, we're at a restaurant and we see the dessert menu, but we've just had the big meal and we're full, but we still want that dessert because it's so tasty. And um, Charles, can I bring you in at this point? Is this, a, is this a physical thing or is this really more about psychology? Ah, I think definitely a bit of both. I guess as a psychologist myself, I'm sort of more interested in those external factors such as you know, the smell of uh, appetising food when we wander through a train station or a shopping centre. More often than we realise, it's these external cues to uh, energy-dense, uh, you know, great-smelling food that suddenly make us think, ah, maybe I will order, eat, drink one of those things when before having smelled or seen that external kind of food cue, uh, we weren't really thinking about food at all. So we're, we're drawn to energy dense? Uh, yes, I may ha even have a sort of evolved our kind of uh, visual systems to be able to you know, uh, look at a scene and almost instantaneously uh, decide if there's something edible out there. And if so, uh, what's the most energy dense, highest fat food? And then our brain kind of immediately pays attention to that. And if that food is in movement or in motion, uh, it's even more attractive. And this is something I think that the uh, food marketeers have sort of intuitively picked up on, showing those pictures, you know, of oozing cheese coming out of a burger, say, or a slice of pizza or lasagna. And that just becomes something that's a very powerful cue that draws our attention that we can't ignore to, to order or to eat more than we otherwise might.